being that close, and that's something that deserves uh, tremendous recognition. So congratulations to the CAB recipients. For the folks that were recognized for the work they did on this facility, that is absolutely outstanding initiative. That is not something that you needed to do. It is not something that was a mission requirement in the sense of getting aircraft off the ground or fixing aircraft or pumping fuel in aircraft like we normally define our mission requirement. This was optional. This was not something that needed to happen. And this was done with the hard blood, sweat, and tears of those individuals that we recognize, and I'm sure quite a few other folks that were part of it. And that is a great sign of teamwork. That's a great sign of initiative. It's a great sign of taking care of your buddies because they did this facility for all of you and for everybody else who's going to come in here after them. And that is absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal work on the part of that team. It's very easy to come here for a year and go, oh, I'm going to kick back and lay on my back and flutter my arms like a turtle that's been flipped over. You don't do that, do you, special? Yes, sir. All right, cool. It's very easy to come out here and do that for a year and say, I'm just going to do the things I need to get done and I'm going to stop there. Or you can go the extra mile and it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. How many folks have already used this facility? One way or another, phone calls, computers, games, there's gonna be a lot more behind you guys. And that's a legacy that you guys are leaving here for the guys that come behind you, as well as everybody else that happens to live out here in Camp Avenger. And for that, I appreciate it. And I'm sure all the rest of the soldiers that are here appreciate that as well. We are coming closer to the end of our tour. For those of you who are wearing 10th, uh, 10th Mountain Patches, which is pretty much everybody that's here. But we are not there yet. You know, you get, catch a kid in the back of your car, you're driving down that road, this Are you there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Who, who's got kids? How many kids ask, are we there yet when you're on the road? Who? <laughs> I'm dad in the front. I'm turning around and telling you, no, we ain't there yet. Who? Oh. We got more to do, guys. We got a lot more to do. You got to stay focused. Make sure you stay focused. This fight will not let us rest get a chance to rest somewhere around the time you get on that aircraft to go home but we are not there yet at all and there are lots of soldiers that are out there that, are, that will continue to depend on what we do and what you do out there most of you are out there turning wrenches on aircraft just like it was from the day we got here those soldiers and these thousands of soldiers that are here in RC East depend on what you were doing right over here in this hangar do not forget that and for damn sure those of us who fly the aircraft that you turn wrenches on, we are quite certainly dependent on what you do and on you doing it right. You do it prompt, do it fast, and do it right the first time. That's what we count on you to do. We count on you more than I can possibly express over the course of this time. Don't ever lose sight of that fact. Sometimes it's easy to, especially you're about the 10 month mark and you're thinking to yourself, we'll get ready to go home. Don't lose fact of, don't lose sight of what you do and why you do it and what difference that makes to me, and what make, difference that makes to anybody else who gets on the controls of these aircraft. Stay focused, all the way through. Watch out for your battle buddy all the way through. And then when it comes time, when, you, when your replacements show up here, make sure you hand it off to them right. Look at your level and your foxhole and figure out what you need to do to give that guy the thing you would want to have if you were coming in. The thing you wanted to have last year when you got here. Think about that. I don't care if you're an E4 or an E7. If it was something that you wish that you could have when you rip toe in, you should be thinking about that, and that is part of our legacy. As much as this building is part of our legacy for the next unit that comes, part of our legacy is going to be how well we do that handoff when the time comes. The time ain't here yet, but it's coming. You can tell the kids we're almost there, but we are not there. So you got to stay focused. You guys keep on doing what you've been doing. We absolutely rely on what you guys are doing out here. You guys have been doing an absolutely phenomenal job this year. Let's finish strong. Cool? Cool. All right. What kind of room is there out there? What room is it we need to stamp out? What's the latest room you heard? Uh, flight dates, sir. Flight dates? Okay, we'll figure that one out. Cool. <laughs> Corporal, what's the latest? Uh, Corporal Sergeant. Sergeant Jetter. Sorry, my eyesight's getting bad. What's the latest rumor you heard? Oh, I haven't heard anything yet, sir. You haven't heard anything? No, sir. I know you guys got some rumors out there. Don't try to bullshit me. PFC Lee. <laughs> Not, he hasn't been here long enough to have a rumor. He hasn't been here long enough to have a rumor? Cool. No rumors I need to answer? You guys got all the answers. You guys know exactly what's happening tomorrow. Okay, I knew someone had a rumor somewhere. What do you got? Dwell uh, time. Dwell time. Dwell time when we get back. How many folks are staying at 10th Cab? Or thinking you're staying at 10th Cab? <laughs> oh, okay. Quite a few of you. The train doesn't stop 
and the Army. I do not want you to focus on the next fight, but you can be quite certain that none of these, that none of these combat missions are over, either in Iraq or Afghanistan. What is going to be the actual answer for 10th Cav? I'll be very honest with you. I don't think that the answer is solidified yet. I don't think that the answer is solidified yet. What I can tell you with a great deal of confidence is that we're not going to go home, do 12 months at home, and be back in the fight like we were last time. That I can tell you with a great deal of confidence. It will be better than that. Whether it's 18 months, 20 months, 24 months, or a little bit longer than that, I honestly don't have the full answer yet. I know exactly what the rumors are out there, but I'm here to tell you not all the facts are in. When folks tell you they know what we're doing next, I'd offer you one point, of, one point to think about. What are we doing right now in Afghanistan when it comes to the number of troops that are in Afghanistan? Drawn down. Drawn down. How many troops are drawn down? How many troops did the President announce we're going to draw down by the end of next year? Anyone? 30,000. The 30,000 surge that came in last year, they will be drawn down by the end of 2012. Anybody know how many of them are being drawn down right now in 2011, by the end of 2011? 10,000. Okay, so 10,000 troops are coming out of Afghanistan right now. We're constantly ticking down the number. By, the, by December of this year, we'll be down 10,000 troops from where we were earlier this year. 10,000 this year, 30,000 total. How many is left? 20,000. There are 20,000 additional troops that will be drawn down out of Afghanistan. Now, you asked me the question about what our dwell time is. Do you see where I'm coming up on the answer? Depending on what the force structure is here and what units they decide to draw down, that may or may not affect our next tour. You know, right now we have three combat aviation brigades in Afghanistan. We got the one up north with 1st ACB, 1st Air Cav Brigade. We got the one down south that's down there right now. 159th Aviation Brigade out of the 101st Division, Destiny. And we are here in RC East with Task Force Falcon. There are patch charts and planning charts out there for what units are going to be here next, based off of there being three units in, in Afghanistan. Now, ask me if I have any confidence one way or the other. I simply don't know, but I don't know who that, when we talk about drawing down another 20,000 troops next year, are we still going to have three aviation brigades in this ground at the end of next year or not? I, I truly have no idea. I have no idea. I can tell you that those kind of questions are being asked. So if they keep three aviation units here, then obviously dwell times across the force stay ex 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 excellent. But if they go down to two units here, it's possible that those dwell times get bigger. That's why it's a big question mark. We have one big, we have one huge question mark that's out there right now when it comes to Afghanistan, and, and that is for us as aviation units, what aviation units are going to be here after next year? That question has not yet been decided nor announced. That's why I can't answer the question on the 12. But like I said, I can tell you with a great deal of confidence, we ain't going back and doing 12 months back then and turning back around in the fight. Cool? cool. How many people are happy to hear that? I am. And uh, it's only going to be better than what we had last year. So if you ask me, I would guess anywhere between 18 months to 24 to 28 months. That's my guess for a range before this brigade goes back in the fight. But have no bones about it, guys. This fight is far from over. And our units across the Army will continue to rotate into Afghanistan for a while. Question of how long we're home? That's a big question. What are the rumors we got out there? Nine-month deployment, sir. Nine-month deployment. Uh, it has been announced by the Army that we will go ahead and cross the Army. They are, they are looking for and pushing units to a nine-month deployment. They're going to start that off very quickly with the infantry units that are out there. There is no doubt about that. Because they have enough, we have enough capacity in the infantry units, those infantry units are going to come out here and they will spend nine months on the ground and go home. Not every unit has the, not every type of unit has the capacity to do nine month wells. As I'm, as nine months in, on, on station. As I'm tracking it right now, we are moving toward aviation units coming here for nine months, but I'm not sure what the first unit is gonna be. As far as I know right now, 82nd Cav coming in after us, are gonna be here for 12 months. But as far as I know after them, it's very possible the aviation units will cut down to a, to a nine month well. I mean, a nine month bog here in, in theater. But aviation units are a little bit behind everyone else because we simply don't have enough aviation brigades in this fight. That's why the Army, I'm sure you guys heard that the Army's standing up a 13th aviation brigade. You guys know where that's going to be? Fort Carson. Fort Carson, Colorado. Who wants to go to Fort Carson? Cool. It'll probably be an option on your wish list here sometime in the, uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, that is good news that we're putting an aviation brigade at Carson. That's another great post that we have an option for going to. Uh, outside of uh, outside of the post that we already have, and I think there'll be a lot of soldiers who'll be happy to get out to Fort Carson. It's a, it's a it's a great place to be, but that's further down the road. 
The reason the Army is building that 13th Cab is because we don't have enough aviation brigades to handle this rotation without getting exactly into this kind of question, Sergeant. Uh, and as we're dealing with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But right now, I'm pretty certain that the 82nd Cab is slated, and they're expecting coming into this fight, they're expecting to be on the ground for 12 months. Even though we just had this nine-month announcement and they haven't arrived yet, I'm pretty sure the expectation is that they're going to do 12 months on the ground. The question is going to be the units after them. Uh, I think we're going to get there. If you ask me my opinion, straight up my opinion, I think we're going to get to the point where aviation units are doing nine months tours. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly when that cutoff is going to be. The other units, though, you're going to hear it, and you're going to hear it talked about in the press, like, hey, the Army's only doing nine months in station. Not for everybody, at least not right away. Maybe eventually, at least not right, not right away. And, so, and if you read the announcements carefully when they go into press, a lot of times they'll have a little blurb in there and say, you know, this is for most units, but certain special type of units or certain low density type units may, may not be able to do a nine month fog. You'll see that, you usually see that blurb somewhere in the article that you're reading. And when they say that, you can say that translates at the 277th Bravo Company. Oh, <laughs> along with the rest of us. What are the, what other rumors we got out there? Those are the two big ones. Oh, all right. Listen, guys, stay focused, okay? Again, one of the things I constantly tell folks is you keep your head and your body right in the same place at the same time. My old boss used to tell me that. A guy that I worked for had been in Vietnam. That was one of his, uh, one of his favorite sayings was keeping your mind and your body at the same place at the same time. If you are here and your feet are walking the ground in Afghanistan, do not allow your mind to be floating back forth, back home to, to that, that great big juicy, juicy steak you're going to have when you get back to your favorite restaurant. Don't start wandering around about, you know, you can wander around in your off time about playing with your kids in the backyard. Don't let your mind wander around down there when you focus on your business. Keep your mind and your body right here. Keep them together. When they get on a plane, you start thinking about the next step. But right now, we still got a lot of work to do here. It's coming up quick, but it is not here quite yet. So stay focused on where you are and watch your buddy. Watch your buddy. Watch that person to your left and right. Oh. Glad I had a chance to come out here. Colonel Silla, thanks. Sergeant Major, great ceremony. Bo, cool. first sergeant, Come company commander, where are you? I lost him over here. Bo, cool. great job, guys. The uh, You guys have done a fantastic job out here with the, uh, with the building and the team. You guys drive on with your work, right? Cool. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks, Bravo Company. It's great when the brigade commander comes out and talks to the companies, lets them know how much he cares lets them address issues and concerns that they have about the deployment or the command. And like I said, it's just great when the command team comes down and recognizes great soldiers, and we appreciate you being here. Sure. Can you introduce yourself and uh, how yes. long you've served and where you're from? My name is Lieutenant Colonel Al Stiller. I'm from Fort Drum, New York, and I've been in the Army for 21 years. I've been in command just under two years, and yeah, about 18 months, 20 months and uh, just happy to be here. We're really lucky. We've got a great group of soldiers and uh, very employed, and so it's a great day to be here. Okay. Would you like to give a shout-out to family and friends back home? Sure. Melissa, Allison, and Kirsten at Fort Drum, New York. Have a great day, and I'll see you in a little while. Love you guys. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, you've been hearing it on TalkingWithHeroes.com. Uh, when we came here, we weren't sure what we were doing, but uh, we're actually going to go inside the rec center now in just a few minutes. So our next segment will be from inside the Rat's Nest Community Center here with the Fort Drum Soldiers, 10th Mountain. And uh, so I want to thank Embry-Riddle for making this trip possible. Embry-Riddle.edu or erau.edu and Mark Leiden with DoThisGetHired.com. And uh, thank you very much. And get these videos out. Remember, if you have YouTube or Facebook, that's where we're putting these videos. All you have to do is click that share button, and they'll be on your YouTube and your Facebook page. And we can get these out across the country so finally the majority of the American people can hear about the good things our troops are doing over here and that where we were earlier in Iraq. So we'll be back with more on TalkingWithHeroes.com here in Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan.